All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're gonna be in the 135, 140 pound division, where we got a lot of delusional conversation going on in the boxing world, specifically as it revolves around four fighters, Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, and the great Devin Haney. And the delusion this time comes from Ryan Garcia talking to Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia talking to Shakur Stevenson and saying things that even though I like Ryan Garcia, I got to tell you, are highly, highly suspect. There's a lot of dudes trying to talk up, trying to talk themselves into and convince people that they're in positions that they're not because whether you like it or not, there's only one dude in that division, really only one dude below Canelo Alvarez that is in that position at all. And believe it, it's not Ryan Garcia. But let's get into or Shakur or Devin. But let's get into that in this video. Right, welcome back. It's your boy Fanon. You know the saying, fake it till you make it. <laughs> and if you have heard the words fake it till you make it, you know what that means. Act like you're there and people will believe that you're there. Act like you've achieved something. Believe that you've achieved something. And eventually you'll get there and you'll make it. Or at least people will act like you have. Uh, and I have to tell you, man, that that, as far as certain aspects of boxing, no better place are people faking it until they make it than in that, in that lightweight division and in that 140-pound division. Because Ryan Garcia just said some of the most ridiculous stuff that I have heard. Also, you have people going at Shakur Stevenson for... One of some in comparing Shakur Stevenson to Devin Haney and saying some of the more ridiculous things. Devin Haney and people talking about money, saying things that to me just are like, hold on, man, what is the, what is all this about? And don't get mad at me for talking about it because they're talking about it. So we're not talking about who has the best jabs and hooks and who has the best footwork and who works hardest in the gym and who hits the hardest or who has the best defense. We're talking about a subject about who the biggest star is and who needs to make concessions to who. And all of those type of conversations are going on. And it's hilarious to me because there's o the, only one person should be talking about that, if at all, but you got everybody but that person doing it. This time, it is Ryan King Ray or King Rye Garcia <laughs> talking about Gervonta Davis right on the heels of Devin Haney and Bill Haney talking about Gervonta Davis and making demands. Just doesn't make sense to me. But be, let me get into the details. But before I do, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you guys so much for your support. It really makes a huge difference to the channel. Um, and thank you to everybody that supports in the super thanks of the videos. And I hope you guys really enjoyed your Thanksgiving video, your Thanksgiving dinners. And or if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving and you're not in the United States, I just hope you enjoyed yesterday as much as I did with the time I got to spend spend uh, with my family. I'm one of the younger siblings, so I got to act like a little kid around my older siblings and my mother and my father. <laughs> so really good, really good weekend or a really good uh, Thanksgiving. And I hope you had the same. Uh, so we're now, though, talk, back talking about boxing. And man, these kids are delusional. You have Ryan Garcia, who's come out and talked about how Gervonta Davis needs to rematch him because, re because Gervonta Davis is a nobody without him. How he's not a star because you can't be a star when you're only doing 150,000 pay-per-views. Says this about Gervonta Davis. You can't be a star 
if you're only doing 150,000 pay-per-views, when he fought me, you need me, and these all these other people need me in order to do the big numbers. So I'm the big, I, I blessed Gervonta Davis with around $30 million, he said, even though I've heard people from that camp say it was more than that, so I think he may be underestimating the blessing that he gave. Now, this is right on the back of saying for of Devin Haney saying that he wants as much money uh, to fight or the same amount. Some people will say they mean the same deal. If it's the same deal, that means he wants the, the rehydration clause and at 136. That's the deal. But whatever. No need to, you know, get into that in this video. However, uh, Devin Haney says that he wants the same deal. The same amount is what Bill Haney said uh, that Ryan got to fight Gervonta because he's the man. The only person that is out there that is not acting as if they are the man when it when it comes to Gervonta Davis is Shakur Stevenson. And the ironic thing is that if you look at what these the last fights that these guys have done and take away and you set aside Shakur Stevenson fighting a fighting on a Thursday in Las Vegas, which I think was, you know, wow. Who's going to do, only person that is going to do big numbers on a Thursday in Las Vegas is probably going to be Gervonta Davis. And even then, his numbers are going to be affected because fights are usually on Saturday where people can fly in from out of town, not in the middle of the week where boxing fans and buy and an F and a, what is it called? A Formula One during the week where there's a Formula One race. Bob Arum just, you know, wow. That's all I can say with Bob Arum with that decision to do that. However, you have Devin Haney, whose tickets are selling well in his hometown of San Francisco. Well, he, I think he's from Oakland, but then you have San Francisco right next to him. Then you have Shakur Stevenson, who fought multiple times in New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, and sold over 10,000 tickets and filled up the place in Newark, New Jersey. I think you're probably going to have around 12,000 people. I suspect that there's been about 12,000 tickets sold for the Devin Haney fight versus Regis Progre in, um, in San Francisco. I looked at the ticket sales. You have uh, sections of it that, are, that they must have just opened up because it's way at the top and there's a bunch of tickets available, but all through the rest of the place, just a scattering, you know, just a speckle of tickets that are available throughout it. I think they said that they had uh, 16, they're going to have a capacity of 16,000 and they've sold 12,000. So as we get closer, like two weeks away, that the rest of those tickets should be sold. So most definitely a very good, uh, sale in uh, in um, San Francisco. Uh, however, if you were to compare that to Gervonta Davis, you have to say, what would Gervonta Davis sell in Baltimore? Gervonta, and what is the gate going to be? I'm looking at the prices, and we'll see what the gate is. We'll see if that gate in that place gets over a million, if it gets over $2 million in a gate. I would be surprised if it gets over $2 million for the gate filling the place up. So where Gervonta has sold out arenas in Atlanta, New York, multiple cities in Texas, or at least one city in Texas, California, Las Vegas. So that's at least five, five places that he's had over $5 million gates and he's had sellouts. And uh, without having to go to his hometown, which is in Baltimore. Now, if you have Ryan Garcia doing a fight in his hometown, I don't know. I think those numbers very well might be him filling that place up, which I, makes me wonder sometimes why people don't do that more often. I think it may have something to do with, you know, the amount of money that, that the venue costs and the availability of the venue. But those particular numbers don't really prove anything. Don't really prove that one guy is bigger than the other. Um, the only thing that really proves it is the gate. Because you look at the, not the amount of tickets that are sold, but you look at the price, the combination of the amount and the price of tickets sold. Uh, there are people that sell out the O2 Arena in the UK and they're not, and their gates are not that big. 
And we've said that a lot of times when you compare the U.S. gates to British gate uh, to gates in the U.K. People that are the U.K. fans point to the numbers of tickets that are sold. People that are American fans pick to the actual money that they make in the event there. Where you can have, like, Gervonta fought in front of 20,000 people against Ryan Garcia. And uh, I do believe tripled the revenue that was made by Tyson Fury the last time he fought in Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 people, right? So uh, the number of people that show up, that's not really, I mean, it's not just straightforward with that. However, Ryan Garcia is saying that he blessed Gervonta Davis, and you, if you only do 150,000 pay-per-views, Gervonta Davis is not on record having done 150,000 pay-per-views. Gervonta Davis's pay-per-views against people that nobody knew was 250 between 250 and 300,000 with people that nobody knew. Let me go back to what Canelo Alvarez's pay-per-views were in the fight after he fought Floyd Mayweather Jr. And he was on pay-per-view in his very next fight. I think it did 300,000 pay-per-views. That's Canelo Alvarez numbers right after Floyd Mayweather Jr., where people considered him to be a very big star. The fights get really big when there's a guy that has a name that fights the big name star, like like Gennady Golovkin. I think I think that Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, relative to Jermonte Davis, are more of a situation of a like a Gennady Golovkin type of situation. If if that. But man, I really wish people would just be a little bit more, you know, humble in regards to really who the big stars are in boxing, man. But again, you know, it may pay off faking it till you make it. But really, I don't think these guys are at Errol Spence Jr.'s level. And Terrence Crawford, I think in the career, in the fights he has subsequent to this, to that, if he gets past Errol Spence Jr., is going to find that out too. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. These people just acting like they are all Floyd Mayweather Jr., man. Just just say it and it'll be so. They speaking it into existence. <laughs> anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.